In this episode, we'll talk about how to do the eye opening and eye close. This would involve a couple of things. It would it requires you to have uh to have the max parameter change. So usually it's either by default uh from ranges from zero to one, like zero, zero point five and one, or it could be negative one, zero and one. This time we gotta change it into zero uh, 0 0.5, 1, and 1.5. And also, we got to use learn how to use the deform path. So this little pen tool over here, what it does, it draws a blue line uh, like this line here. And I'll show you what it does later. What it basically do is a sort of a smart tool to make some curves move uh, without distorting too much. So those are two new tools that we will be or two new methods we'll be introducing today let's start to talk about uh, what we're supposed to do so this this is what we're trying to do we're trying to make uh, the parameter I L open and I R open to respectively do this and do this so natural state at zero at one you will see the, the normal state face, uh, the same one you drew and the same one you're, you designed originally. And then at 0 0.75, you would see a half-opened eye. And gradually to zero, the character closes her eyes, like that. And on the other side, when it passes one, as it goes uh, approaches to 1.5, it will open why almost like it's glaring at you and that's what we're trying to do we are making these uh, variations so that uh, for multiple universal expressions these are uh, very common that might that you if you learn them you you you'll find them handy eventually and if you have but if you have specific expressions with certain uh, eye shape then you may add more points or you don't need certain points or you know, there's you know, there's always room for you to play around. However, we just we're just gonna talk about the basic today. So we want this, 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 and this. All right. So four states. Okay. So let's go to um, yeah. Let's open up a new. So here I have a separate uh, I. I think it's here. Let me check this. Okay, this is done. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm showing this one. I'm taking this one away. All right. So here I have a um, untouched, unfixed uh, eye set, eye eye parts. What it consists. So as we said last uh, last lesson, what it consists is the main eye deformer. So, oops. This is not ready yet, so I'm gonna go back to the old one. The main eye deformer, which is the box you see, hold on, this the box you see here. So this main box for the eyes, and it's controlling uh, both eyes to be at what position and what uh, ratio or uh, proportion changes as it moves her head around. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you you will have to go to go back to your last episode and check out what it's been done. So we got the main eye deformer, but we won't be touching a deformer in this episode because it concerns none, none, none of those. And so we can hide the deformer and just look at the main parts, texture parts. Now there are 10 of them, sounds like a lot, but um, I'm gonna revise them again. There is one, uh, there are four eyelids, so left lower, left upper, right here, and right upper and right lower. So there are four eyelids, and what they do, as I said last time, they basically covers the eyeball and the eye white as the eyes close up, because they'll be in the same position as the eyelash goes down or go up, and that's why uh, if you don't have these eyelids, it will be showing extra parts, which uh, shouldn't be. So. It is for covering up extra bits of uh, eye white and eyeball when eye closes. And so you got these four eyelids and then six eyelashes. And respectively, they are the upper eyelash, 
the side eyelash and the bottom one. Now, as I said last episode, there, there's a need for having three, uh, three parts instead of two because if you look carefully, and I'm going to open the, the fixed sample again, if you look closely, as the eyes closes like that, these three parts, uh, they change their state uh, individually. So it's not really in a certain pattern, not, not in a certain scale, not in a certain uh, proportion. As the eye, the upper eyelid closes down by first uh, turning into a flat line and then gradually move to this position as a downward curve. But this part, as you can see, it doesn't change shape that much. The size doesn't change much between 1 and 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.75 and it gradually hides itself up into this little corner here almost not seeing it but uh, you can make it disappear but I would prefer it here to have a little bit of uh, eyelash um, stretching out and that's the way I like it so that's what I'm doing here it basically hides itself and of course the lower eye eyelash it doesn't do anything well it does in this case but um, it slowly moves up it doesn't move as much between 0 and 0, 0 0.75 but 0 0.75 and 1 it actually has a lot of changes you can, as you can see this part and then as it opens wide it would change a little bit it's unnecessary but you know if you have if you're very picky on the, the position then you might have to so here we have 10 parts let me turn it on okay so we have 10 parts now first step is to set up your perimeter like right now you wouldn't be seeing four dots you would be seeing uh, probably the first and the last one and there's no dots in between and if you just do it the usual way which you click here and you only see a scale from 0 to 1.5 allow you to put dots in between but like I said we don't we well no actually you'll be seeing 0 0 0.5 and 1 and that's all you have but you need 1.5 so how do you do that you have to go to set parameters so this button here and go to the part or the parameter you want to fix so it will be this one these two I L open and I R open press edit and then change the maximum value to 1.5 so if you're seeing 1 right now which is a default number change it to 1.5 and press OK and press OK again remember do it both so left side and right side both sides and then press OK and now you would probably see 0, 0, 0.75 and 1.5 at this point I want you to click once on 0, 0 0.75 and 1 and 1.5 also for both sides so left side and right side 0, 0 0.75 1 1.5 don't forget to have them both and press OK and then you will see your first um, part with these light lit up so four, four dots on each line and you don't want you need to do it like you need to do it for all of these but you don't want to do it 10 times well here's what you can do you can press shift and click and highlight them all and then go back to this part and just at the points and press ok and you can double check them individually you will see that all of them already have the green dots on already so that's what you need okay so we got a dot we can start working um, in this part we're gonna introduce the deform path tool so this pen tool up on the center right and this is how you do it so first of all 1.0 is not a point that we need to do anything with because all of them should be in the normal state and that's why they shouldn't be moving at all so we're gonna start working with 0 0.75 yes let's do that so 0 0.75 remember that we need to have this eye uh, both sides individually uh, half open and half open how do you know it's half 
Well, it's not exactly by mathematical half. You want to do it a um, slightly uh, sort of squinting eye, and it's for certain expressions. So if it's uh, if the character is disappointed, or it's not impressed, or feeling bored, and that that kind of half open eye is sort of the one that you need right here. So first, Im imagine what is the sort of the image, the visual of it. And then that's what you need to do. If you want to be sure, you can draw it on uh, your paint tool and then import as a guide image and follow that guide. So that's an option. But I think probably most of us are comfortable with uh, just you know just do it uh, off the point. So let's click. Let's start with. I don't currently you're selecting eye lower, the left lower eyelid, which. It's not, you don't want to touch the eyelid before doing the eyelashes. So let's do the eyelash first. Right, or this is the left side. So left lower, eye, uh, left upper eyelash. Yes, this part. Select it. Select your pen tool. And you'll see, remember you're at the 0 0.75. And you'll see these white dots uh, surrounding the upper eyelash. Now what, what? watch this. You want to click here, here here and then extend beyond the end of it and pr press here now you can move these dots if you don't if you hover over the dots you will see a pen tool with a minus symbol on it and if you click on it it will cancel all the points so you're just not what you're trying to do you're not trying to add or minus to uh, take away points you're trying to move them but you if you want to move them you have to hold down control and then click once so it turns yellow and tells you which one you're selecting and then drag it and as you see when you drag it you move the upper eyelash along so I would say about probably not that much just a little bit too far so I want I want the eyelash to be sort of flat and I want her to look unimpressed. All right. So remember not to stretch outwards because that would extend the length of it, and that would look weird. You just want to go up and down and make sure it doesn't grow longer. And if you're done, you can either click outside to have a better look, or if you're ready, you just press um, delete and delete again, and you delete the line so that it gets out of the way. Uh, you can edit that later, uh, but you can't retrieve it because you deleted it already. But that's usually how I do it. I just take it away, and if I need it, I'll put it back on and do it again. So currently we did this side, and let's give it a look. So we're working with this one, IR open. What? Wait, this should be... Oh, oh, whoops. So I made a mistake. Um, yeah, it's a pretty obvious mistake. Uh, left side should stick with IL open, and right side should stick with IR open. They shouldn't be sharing the same line. So let's select all the left left things, and then let's take away the IR opens. Delete all key for IR. And let's select the right side and delete the, all of those ILs. Remember, select the one you want. Press OK. So currently, we haven't done the right side yet, and the left side should be done with this part. Between 0 0.75 and 1, there you go. I have open eyelash. Now it's not perfect because I'm, you know, I'm not trying to do a perfect, uh, uh, completed project. So. I'm just going to show you real quick, and it's going to be a little bit um, stretching it, but you get the idea. This is how you want to do, and if this is working for you, then you're, you're, you can move on to the next step. Now, let's do zero. So from 0 0.75 to zero, what should it look like? Let's select the, what was that, the upper, upper right eyelash? upper left eyelash. All right, so do the curve again. Let's select the eyelash and then select the pen tool and do it like this. 
Now it doesn't have to be too precise of where the middle two dots are, you know, but generally spread them out equally unless you know exactly uh, you want this to be the critical anchor point and that's why you want to put it here. Otherwise, you spread them out equally uh, you should be able to work it, work it out. So right now we need, th we need this to be a shut uh, eye state. So when her eyes are shut, it should look about like this. You may or may not extend a little bit, but obviously not too much. And you don't need to go all the way down and close this with the bottom one because remember as you, well I think most of the case is that when you close your eyes, your lower eyelash would also shift upwards to meet the upper one. So they would meet at somewhere here, but so, so that you don't need to completely touch it. Unless there's a particular case you want to do, if that's your style, then go with it. Otherwise, uh, just leave some space where it's fine. So about like this, I want this side to be a little more curved towards here. And this is about what she looks like when she closed her eyes. So I got that. A quick check. And let's delete this so that we can see clearer. And so there you go. The upper eyelash is done. Oh, wait, wait. We, need, we still need to do uh, 1.5. Right. So let's go to 1.5. Select the left upper and do it again. This, 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 this. And just a little bit, not too much. And this is what she looks like when she glares at you. Now, as you move this up, you start to see the upper eyelash uh, passing the line, and it shouldn't be. So it's, it's covering part of the iris, covering part of the eye white. Don't worry about it because later on you'll move it along. So just, just uh, hang with it right now. About like this. And now you got the upper eyelash nailed. So next we can go with the side eyelash. Right, left side eyelash. And basically the same thing. Let's go to 0 0.75. And this time it's easier because you already have uh, your your upper eyelash done already. So it, 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 you would know exactly where it should be, at least part, like at least half of it. The other side, um, and this is all about your style. And if you're not good with, if you're not familiar with uh, animations, then you might have to give a little test to know exactly where you want to put these uh, these changes, how far you want to go before it changes shape, and all that. But um, unless you have a clear image in mind, then it will be fine with it. So close a little bit. That's probably okay. And let's do the lower one, which is a shut image. And I'll do this. And I can move it, I can move it here, here, and here. Actually, I don't need this tool for this part. Not much, at least. Um, I may have to curve it in a little bit. So it, it turns, as it shuts down, it turns inwards. And and that's what it ends with. So that's that's pretty much a okay cover up like that. It might not look natural, and no matter how hard you try, it still may not look look natural to you. But that's because we're looking at frame by frame really carefully. And when you're actually doing animation, it's gonna be uh, like what is what is an eye blink like half a second. So you won't you probably won't notice as much as you're seeing right now um, of those uh, broken parts in between anchor points. All right, so yes, you can try really hard to make it as aesthetic as possible, but if you don't, you'll probably be able to cover it up because the eye blinking animation is not, it's pretty quick. So you got these three and now you gotta do this one. Now here's an example of how you not if you're not doing it right. You see, I just click, I just uh, added added in the the deformed path, but it's not moving anything because as I create them, I wasn't selecting the part that I need, so I wouldn't know where which part to deal with. 
move this up a little bit. Probably that's enough. It's, it wouldn't be anything too dramatic on the side lash. Okay, so what's left is left over. This, 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 this. And as it close to here, I want it to move up a little bit, just the curve to curve up a little bit. I won't, I won't move the whole part. So it's not shifting upwards, it's just like changing the expression a little bit. And then as it goes back here, I can do it again. As it goes down here, I want it to, oops, there I go again. Uh, left lower. Left lower. Select. Mm. Do this. And just roughly hide it at the bottom half of the upper eyelash, and that should be fine. Now, as you can see, it is doing the little blink stuff already. Uh, not the best, because if this is her normal state blinking, I would find the bottom half uh, sort of change of shape. It's kind of unnatural. So yeah, I, I probably need to work on the, the transitioning. But I'm going to leave it like that for now. And for the wide open, I just need it to shift down a little bit. Oops. Like that. And there you go. Your eye should be done like that. Now, the rest of it is basically, oops, the rest of it is basically the eye, uh, the eye covers. Because as you can see, your eyelash are blinking, but obviously the inner parts are showing all over the place. And you gotta cover up the, cover up the bleeding. So let's click on the upper eyelid. And I'm not sure how is your polygon looking right now. Depending on whether you used the script or you did it manually, this may look completely different. But I'm going to redo this. Like currently you're seeing it's done by the computer. It's done by the script. It's automatically generated. And it's not the best tool to use. Like it's not the best format to use. So I'll, I'll redo it in, a, uh, in the easiest way for me to, to work on it. And if you understand how to work it in the manual way, then you know which kind of generation ge generating method would uh, give you the right one. So let's double click the upper eyelash and let's take a look at the details. Now I want you to do this. Let's just delete all the inner point and just leave the outer point there. Because I think sometimes if you delete outer point and redo it, it might distort the material itself. I'm not sure how it works, but sort of had a problem with it before. Uh, it's probably the first time you see me doing this. This, this, that, that, that. Uh. And the rest, I don't, I don't really have care. The upper part, maybe like this. All right, so let's go down here. Let's do the zigzag. Like that. Let's go here and do the zigzag. Uh, you maybe like this. All right, so this. There, there. There you go. I would, if you're importing it manually, um, you would probably do the out, outer uh, outer ring better 
than this one and hence you could probably do it more tidier but I'm pretty familiar with uh, this kind of pattern so even if it's a little bit not like it's a little bit messy I could probably work with it it's not the best and if you have to if you really have to do it all over just do it over just, you know just delete this part and import import the, the eyelash uh, eyelid again wouldn't wouldn't be too much trouble Sort of like that. So I don't really care about the parts because we don't we, we won't be dealing a lot with it. Mostly it's this part, and we can always come back for it if we need more dots. But remember, always remember, if you got more dots, it's only adding chances that you might increase your workload so much that it might end up look bad. So know know your know your uh, comfort zone. So we got this. We need this. Let's start moving. Shift this down. Dot by dot. Try not to move too far away from, like, uh, away from the where 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 it originally was, or or else when it closes down, you would see like pieces of skin flying over the place. Even though it might end up looking nice, uh, the trans the transition would look bad. So we got this. What it's doing is I'm just stretching lower half of it so that as it closes down, it would cover the bleed out parts. I can see still a little bit bleeding here, so let's go back. Actually, yeah, let's put it down a little bit. That's probably okay. And now let's go all the way down. And this time we'll drag them all the way down. Let's have the bottom parts landed uh, in position first. So we got these down, and because these are stretching too much, you'll see a blur here. All you gotta do is or or or, I can oops, or I can do actually yeah maybe I can do this. Yep. So I'm gonna select a bunch, just move it all at once. Now you don't want you don't want the upper dots to pass lower dots. They should be in the same vertical order or, or horizontal order. You shouldn't you shouldn't be one point passing too much the other side, or you or you see like weird distortion happening here and there. Uh, you might not notice when you're doing it, but when you export it out, you might see weird things happening. So careful about um, the orders of it. You don't want to cross the original ones. Now this part is kind of tricky because. You see this line here uh, where the shade change from darker to lighter? Originally, it should match a smooth cutout like this, around this line. But currently, we're moving the eye down and we've been using, we've been, this original piece was all the darker shade. It doesn't consist of any lighter shade. And that's why it would look kind of a weird cutout point. And if I zoom out, you will find it look kind of unpleasant so there's several way to cover it up my usual way is try to stretch it around and see if it I can make it look n a little bit more natural and less obvious that there's some kind of distortion so perhaps like that and like if you look over here as the eye closes yeah it's actually not working out that well um, there are several ways to to have a better patch, but those involve some higher, um, some more complicated uh, techniques. And I don't want you to jump into it too soon. I'll talk about them eventually, but not today. So just hold on to it right now. And if you have to finish project, then uh, I would say do it like this, or just leave it a weird, a little bit of a weird cutout. Yeah. So let's. So let's see. How, how does it look like? How does it look like? We're covering, the eyes are closing, the upper eyelid is dropping, and now we're missing the extend, like the wide open, which it should move up. And this is pretty easy. Just, just shift everything up like that. Again, if you, if you like, you can always use select tools to select a bunch and move them all at once. 
So there you go. The upper eye cover is done. And basically it lowers also the same thing. You can redesign the polygons for easier, for better use. Um, and then you do this and you do, do it over on the left side or the right, the right eye over here. And you should be done with the eye of open and close. So I'm gonna go back to yes, the one I the one I've done I've completed previously. As you can see, it would end up looking something like this. Close, open, unpressed, and shocking or glaring. And if you want to check, you can go to you can move around with other angles like when it's looking this way, you get the eyeball looking this way, and then do the blink. Like that. Sometimes when it's looking at a different angle, uh, what originally looked fine might actually appear uh, a mis like some mistakes coming out as you change the angle. But um, if you really have trouble fixing that, you can contact me and tell me your case and I might find a, a custom a solution for it. Otherwise, I won't be, like there's no one universal method that could promise this not to happen. So uh, I'm just giving a heads up warning if you want to, you can probably solve it out yourself if you spend enough time in it, but otherwise, uh, yeah, or you can contact me to help you and otherwise you can just ignore it, you know. So we got this, see this, these are fine, and we we are done with the eyes. Well, there's one more thing. If, in my case, it doesn't apply, but if in your case, uh, like I said, probably in the last episode, towards the end of it, if you got the eye dot, um, the eye dot, the eye spotlight problem, sometimes people have their spotlights. If we go to eyeball, and let me check on, let me check on the, Part that I need. Spotlight. Actually, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna use this one. So the left and right spotlight. Some people, or some character design, have the spotlights on the upper left corner, upper right corner. Now that's actually in the more common design. It's just in my case is this side, but most are over here. Uh, the problem is that as you close the eyes it will first cover up completely the eye uh, light spot and remain a an iris without the light spot and it, it sort of give a a dark and cruel uh glare but that's not what you need because you're just trying to make an unimpressed face or she's slightly tired or maybe that's her happy face you want her to squint her eyes a little bit and with a smile, and that's how it show her happiness, which you would need your eye spotlight to be there, or else it would look sort of like a dead eye. So what you wanna do, <clears throat> if that happens to you, doesn't happen to me, but if that happens to you, you can either give it a deformer that controls it to move shifts downwards as you open eye and open LR, open and close, or you can have each of them have their own perimeter set up and do the same thing. Just make sure when it's open, when it's closing down, you change its position. In my case, you don't want to do it individually in the material because as you can see, eyeball X, Y, X and Y already give it nine different positions for it to uh, be at. If you have the center and then you change the position, like say, I'm gonna change it a little bit lower, all right? You gotta do it nine times because you gotta do it once here, do it once here, 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 and here, and then do it nine times. And then for the next position, which might be, I don't know, maybe here, when it's close or just a little bit left, you need to move it a little slower. So a new position again, and you gotta do it over another eight times. And that's why your workload is being multiplied. So do not, like I said in, in past over and over again, do not have more than two perimeters working in the same spot never just it's not a good idea you, you can but you like but uh, you get spend like a whole hour to do something you can then get can be done in five minutes if you had a transformer or a deformer
So if you already have eyeball X and eyeball Y controlling the eye spotlight, just create a new deformer, put them in as a child object, and then move it to your heart content. And that's all you gotta do. Pretty fairly, like, really not a lot of workload. And that's about, yeah, that's probably all the tips I can give you on this. So let's review a little bit. Um, we're not doing it for the eye open and close. Today we're doing eye, eye open and close. Uh, we don't need to use any transformer other than the spotlight maybe, uh, de depending on your case, but mostly we don't use any transformer. All that is controlled within the eye parts and it's 10 components. So the, there's four of them are the eyelids, eye cover, left, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and then we got the six eyelashes. One, two, three, one, two, three. And according to design, you might have more, you might have less. In the past, I've worked with two only, and it's not, it's doable. Uh, I don't find it less workload if I have, if it's depending on the shape of it, but usually it's not saving you a lot, lot of workload if you have two instead of three. And so, and then we move them individually with the deform path and the trick to deform path is select the part or select highlight the part and then add those blue uh, add those white dots with the blue line and then you can start moving them around when you're done double click delete or delete it twice delete the whole path and you can add a new one work all over again or you can see how good it looks wink wink yep so that's about it uh, in future lessons, when we get to it, we might talk about how to patch these little parts with uh, the weird cutoff of the shading. Um, easiest way is to have your original design to not have different shades within this area. Just avoid it, all right? But obviously, that's not the most professional um, uh, rule of thumb because what if your client or your project needs to have that art style? But if you if you like to have your practice project to look better, then probably just avoid it for now and somehow figure it out later on how to, how to work things out. Otherwise, um, I'll talk about other ways to patch this up. Again, those are patches, though it's not really a solution. It only makes things look slightly better. So that's about it for this lesson, and I'll see you guys next time. I'll t I'll be talking about the eyebrows which should be fairly easy, but let's put our fingers crossed. And I'll see you guys next time.